Hello, my name is Megan Wheeling, and today I will be doing my presentation on the Battle of Okinawa. The island of Okinawa is part of the larger island group, the Ryukyu Islands. It's located about 400 miles from the main islands of Japan. Okinawa was its own separate country and culture until it was annexed by Japan in 1879. Here you can see where Okinawa is in relation to Japan. The United States was originally going to invade the island of Formosa, today known as Taiwan. But the island was large and heavily defended, and it would require more support than what the military had available at the time. Okinawa was also heavily defended, but its smaller size meant that it would need less support. Capturing Okinawa would cut off Japan's supply lines while also shortening the United States' own, and it would also serve as a final stepping stone in an invasion of the main Japanese islands. Thus, Operation Iceberg was formed. Fighting on the island was the U.S. 10th Army. It was a combined army with six divisions made up of three Marine divisions and three Army divisions. Admiral Nimitz was at the top, Admiral Spruance and Turner led the naval units, and Lieutenant General Buckner led the ground troops. The United States' goal was to take the island and invade Japan. The Japanese had the 32nd Army, led by Lieutenant General Ushijima, Lieutenant General Cho, and Colonel Yahara. The Japanese were planning on fighting a war of attrition, outlast the United States, and cause such devastating casualties that the U.S. would sue for peace. Japan knew that the United States was planning on attacking Okinawa. In order to prepare for the upcoming battle, they built a complicated network of interconnected caves, some with two stories and many with multiple rooms. Some of the exits were as small as two square feet. The builders of the caves were men in the army, Okinawa home guards called the Boetai, and the local villagers, including children. Mines and booby traps surrounded the caves as a defense line against invaders. The Boetai and other local villagers, including young boys, conscripted into the army in order to pad its numbers. Other native Okinawans brought into the battle were the Himayuri students. Beginning March 23, 1944, 222 school-age girls and 18 of their teachers on Okinawa were ordered by the Japanese to begin training as nurses for the soldiers on the island. They were between the ages of 15 and 19 and were students at the top two girls' schools in Japan. The field hospitals the girls were working out of were in the underground caves. These young girls had very little to eat and drink, and their duties included feeding and giving water to injured Japanese soldiers, caring for their wounds, which included picking maggots and burying the dead under the cover of night. Once the Japanese retreated from their lines, the Himayuri girls followed. They worked out of caves along the way. Once it became clear that the battle was coming to a close, the Himayuri Corps was disbanded on June 18th with orders to go home. They were thrown out into the heat of battle with no protection. Girls had been killed prior to this, but the vast majority of them died after the Corps was disbanded. Overall, 211 of the 222 girls were killed, and 16 of the 18 teachers were killed as well. Many committed suicide as they feared being raped, tortured, and murdered by U.S. soldiers. To prepare for the oncoming battle, the U.S. used aerial photography to find out where Japanese weaponry that would impact the landing invasion was located. They also used aerial photography to determine where the best landing position was located. They did this by using the photographs to measure offshore water depths, coral conditions, wave height, surf behavior, beach dimensions, as well as other information. With this information, they were able to narrow down the landing point to Hagushi Beach with diversionary feints elsewhere. One issue that came up was that an invasion force would have to sail close to the islands of Kurama Reto, which they had very little intelligence on. The photos taken were blurry, but it looked like the island contained coast defense guns. Eight days before the invasion on Okinawa, 
a preliminary force landed on Kirama Reto, where they found that the coast defense guns were actually sugarcane, and that the island instead contained around 300 suicide boats. The job of the suicide boats was to wait until the landing force was ashore on Okinawa, then each of the boats would crash into the supply ships. Here you can see how close Kurama Reto is to Okinawa and why it posed a threat to the naval forces. After securing Kurama Reto, a naval bombardment force positioned itself so that it covered Hakushi Beach, and then bombed the beach for the next seven days. On April 1, the landing force landed on the island with little resistance. They estimated that 4,000 troops would die during the landing phase alone, but only one man had died. He had drowned after stepping into a hole in a coral reef. Yontan Airfield was captured the same day, and the forces began moving further inland. The Japanese had concentrated their numbers on the Shuri Line, where their plan was to lure the U.S. troops inland in order to ambush them. On April 7, U.S. aircraft sunk the massive battleship Yamato, along with a light cruiser and three destroyers from the escort. The Yamato Skull was to bombard the landing area on Okinawa. It had been given just enough fuel to get to the island. The infamous kamikaze attacks didn't make sense for many people, as they were a major drain on resources, both in relation to planes and pilots. But early reported successes of kamikaze attacks made the higher-ups in the military rely on them more, especially in Okinawa. On April 6, Japan began sending waves of kamikaze attacks. There would be 10 in total over the course of the Battle of Okinawa. In total, around 2,000 Japanese pilots took part in the kamikaze attacks. 5,000 United States sailors were killed, with 30 ships sunk and 400 damaged. Troops were able to make it to Kakazu Ridge on April 8, and they attacked the next day. The companies that were sent to Kakazu Ridge were unable to meet up as planned, and each were involved in heavy fighting. The troops were unable to move from their locations to assist the other as they were all under heavy fire, and some had even been forced into hand-to-hand -hand combat. After a day of fighting, each company was able to retreat but sustained heavy losses. Another attempt on the ridge was made the next day, but advance was slow as they were under heavy fire like the day before, and they were forced to pull back. Further attacks on Kakazu Ridge failed as well, and each division kept having to be replaced in order to combat the depleting men and the exhaustion. Kakazu Ridge was finally taken on April 21 after the continual assaults wore down the Japanese defenses and soldiers. Fighting the Japanese on Okinawa was incredibly difficult. The Japanese were well protected in the cave systems, and it was difficult to get through. The use of explosives stopped them from moving above ground, but it didn't have much of an effect inside the caves. U.S. soldiers had to take out each cave one at a time, and the engineer demolition squads played a big part in the attacks. One tactic was to have an engineer throw a phosphorus grenade into the cave to take out any soldiers up front and push the rest towards the back. Then they would use flamethrower tanks or a portable th flamethrower. In other situations where the target was larger, they would pump gasoline from trucks into the cave and set it ablaze. The caves needed to be completely destroyed in order to make sure that they couldn't be used again. The Japanese counterattacked on May 4, with its final goal being the attack on Lt. Gen. Buckner's headquarters. By May 5, it was clear that the attack had failed and the U.S. was able to regain the offensive by May 11, but not without heavy casualties on both sides. Both the Marines and the Army were able to make steady progress in their objectives on the Shuri Line, and by May 21, they were both ready to break into the final Shuri position. After some difficulty, the Marines were able to get their tanks onto a hill they called Sugarloaf Hill. The Army took Conical Hill, both opening the rear of Shuri Line open to attack until the rains came and they were forced to stop. Using the rain delay, General Ushijima began removing his men from the Shuri line on May 22, 
setting up a final defense on the southern tip of the island, the Yaeju Dake Escarpment. The U.S. took control of Shuri by May 31, and by June 9 were continuing south to meet the Japanese. The rain had made the roads muddy, but the terrain at Yaeju Dake was good for tanks, and the U.S. had superior numbers and experience. The Japanese had been completely depleted over the course of the battle, but they were in some of the largest cave defenses on the island. It took three weeks to take Yaeju Dake, and organized resistance was declared over on June 21. Both Lieutenant General Ushijima and Lieutenant General Cho committed suicide on June 22. General Buckner had been killed on June 18, and over 12,000 U.S. soldiers were killed over the course of the battle, along with over 100,000 Japanese soldiers. Unfortunately, the native Okinawans suffered drastically from the battle. As the Japanese retreated, they forced civilians from the caves they had taken refuge in in order to make room for the soldiers. They were thrown out into open battle without protection. Many civilians believed that the U.S. soldiers would rape, torture, and kill them, and many committed suicide so that they wouldn't have to face them. In all, estimates say that around 150,000 Okinawans were killed, about a quarter of their population. The Battle of Okinawa is considered to be one of the bloodiest battles of the Pacific. It took a huge toll on the soldiers, and a final invasion of Japan had to be reconsidered. President Roosevelt had died April 1945, leaving President Truman to make the final decision of what to do. He had been made aware of the creation of the atomic bombs, the Manhattan Project. The Battle of Okinawa had a heavy casualty rate, and it showed just how far the Japanese were willing to go in the defense of their homeland. It also showed how much a potential invasion would cost Japanese civilians as well. It was decided that an invasion would be too costly, and this decision was made to forego it in favor of the atom bomb. Emperor Hirohito was given the ultimatum on, in July to surrender or face the consequences. Hirohito refused to surrender, and two atom bombs were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in August. <laughs>